Amber, I know your husband loves to grill, but how often does he clean the grill? Or do you help well, him clean it? Well, and I was going to say, do you know that's how she said, I know your husband loves to grill? <laughs> Which, yeah, you're very true. That is very true. I don't know how much he cleans it. I know probably not as much as he's supposed to. Well, it's a big grill. And I don't help with it either. <laughs> so it's probably time to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, in today's home improvement, sponsored by Aero Service Team, Jeff speaks with Josh Peshak, a fire captain with the Bismarck Fire Department, who sells smoking steel grills. And here's what he had to say about cleaning your grill. We're back with Josh Peshak from Smoke and Steel Grills. Josh, thanks again for inviting us in. Yeah. So we've gone over the pits and spits, but how do we clean our grills so we can do it safely, we can do it well? Sure. With the pellet grills being you are burning wood in there, you're going to have an ash buildup. For these to work properly, you want to make sure you have good airflow. And as that ash builds up, it can block the air movement in the grill. So the first thing you want to do is vacuum all your ash out uh, to make sure that that's clean out of your barrel and out of the fire pot. So with, with the pellet grills, a lot of times you're doing a fatty meat uh, that's going to create a lot of grease. So when that happens, you're going to have a grease buildup. And with the pellet grill, you can then bump up the temperature, say you want to do some chicken wings or something like that, and that grease can start on fire. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you scrape all that grease out. One of the common tools for cleaning a grill that everybody's had is that grill brush. What you want to watch for on those is that the bristles don't fall off. So anytime you use that grill brush, you want to then make sure you rinse off the grates if you use those. I actually have gone away from using a grill brush most of the times, okay. and I've switched over to a bamboo uh, scraper. So what I'll take on these and I'll just scrape off the big chunks of, of grease and things that may build up on there. I'll do both the top and the bottom of the grill. If you're doing some of those bigger fatty meats like a brisket or a pork butt, mm -hmm. you can also get some particles that build in between these expanded metal grates. Yeah. So then I'll just take a little paint scraper that I have that has a pointed edge and then just clean out the areas in between to scrape that out. Then with these being a carbon steel, you treat it just like a cast iron and then re-season it. So that is the pits and spits, the pellet grill. Is it any different when you're doing a, a just a, a normal grill? Yeah, a normal grill, a lot of times they have the stainless steel grates. So with those, you can get more aggressive with the scraping. The paint scraper and the bamboo can work, um, but you can also use different items you can bring those into your kitchen have heard some guys that put them in the dishwasher it is going to throw some grease around sure. um, so you might not always want to do that most of the time i'll take mine into the sink um, clean them at the sink all right josh so we went over the bamboo scraper and the paint scraper but you got a couple household kitchen items that can yeah. help do it so what do we do to use those? So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take these in. You can scrape the big chunks of things off here. When you get it into the sink, just use warm soapy water. You can use the Brillo type pad or even just a scouring pad like you'd have on a sponge. And then you can clean the grates off with that. And these will fit inside a sink in your home. And being that it's stainless steel, it's not gonna harm the, the grate at all. Right, uh, and you can be really aggressive with how you're scraping them. And these are one, if you do use that grill brush with the wire bristles, you wanna make sure you rinse that off and get all any wire bristles off of there. And that's why I recommend using different items such as that. I always try to avoid using chemicals if I can. If I do have to use a harsher cleaning chemical, then I do a, a burn off in my grill. Use it at 350 degrees for at least a half hour just to burn off any uh, chemical remnants that might be there. The other type of grates that some people might have are the porcelain coated grates. Now those you want to be a little bit careful not being too aggressive on to make sure you don't crack that uh, enamel that might be around the, the grates on there. Josh, some really great information. We appreciate you sharing it with me and our viewers at home. Uh, folks, stop on down to Smoke and Steel Grills. I'm telling you, Josh really knows his stuff. Check out these grills, these pellet grills. They are far, far superior to anything else that I have personally seen locally. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Jeff. Natalie is just ready to buy a grill at this point after watching all that. But this has been our home improvement sponsored by Aero Service Team. And for more information on those grills, Josh sells, go to smokeandsteelgrills.com. Yeah. I mean, what's your favorite thing to grill, Natalie? Well, I don't have a grill, but if I did have one, I'd <laughs> make some kebabs. Yes. I saw a great segment on Studio 701 yesterday. Me too. I was like, <laughs> I want kebabs. That made me, I said to my husband, I'm like, can we please go get a sirloin so we can make yeah. kebabs? Yeah, like, I mean, or even just... Just like a ribeye or mm -hmm. a sirloin, as you mentioned, I think anything off the grill is so, it so delicious. Better mm -hmm. For some reason, I don't know why that is, <laughs> but 